Uh, all right. Okay. Let's get started. Uh, all right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Tax Thursday. I am your host and ARIA Greater East Bay President. My name is Elena Wu Osman. I'm also a partner with Sequoia Real Estate. And ARIA is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting sustainable homeownership opportunities in the Asian American community by creating a powerful national voice for housing and real estate professionals that serve this dynamic market. We have about 45 chapters nationally and over 18,000 members. If you are interested in joining as a member, reach out to me after this webinar and we will make you a member. We like to put on monthly events uh, for our members and towards the end of this presentation, I will be announcing our next two upcoming events for the month of March and April. So stay tuned for that. Uh, real quickly, I want, to, I want to introduce some of our board members. We have Justin Wong, who is our immediate past president, Michelle Rayo, our vice president, Alex Lago, our secretary, Charlene Ferguson Lee, who is our treasurer, and we have John Pax, our events chair. I am also seeing that we have Tiana Bullock here in audience and Jane Hong. Thank you for coming and uh, welcome to the event. And uh, next, I would like to thank our sponsors for making this all happen. And that is our gold sponsor, Bank of America, bronze sponsors, Bank of the Orient, Chase, PNC Bank, Citibank, and HSBC. Our affiliate sponsors, Garrett Yan with EXP, Vivian Ho with EXP, Vinny Manuyan with Fast Auto Collision. And I would also like to introduce our guest speaker. His name is Jake Adams, CPA with Adams ABC Accounting Services. He has helped realtors save an average of ten to twenty thousand dollars a year in overpaid taxes. If you guys have any questions that come up, please ask. Feel free to ask right away. Bottom right corner in the Q and A feature. Jake will answer them live as he goes. And here we have Jake, please take it away. Awesome, well, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, just like Elena said, if you could just go ahead and, and pop in the chat really quick, just so I can see uh, that the chat is working for everyone. And uh, just like she said, as we can do uh, questions and in the chat, I have that on a separate screen. So as you're going through, as we're going through the slides, feel free to, to put your questions uh, in the chat. Hold on just a second here. I'm just making some last minute changes to these slides so that you guys have these. And then I need to share my screen. Okay, is someone putting something in the chat? Cause I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, let's see. There are, there's some chatting going on. Do you see any chat? Hmm, oh, it's not showing up for me. Um, the last chat I got was from, Oh, there's one. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Jane. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is anyone else chatting or is just just Jane? Uh, maybe that's the first one you're seeing. There was a bunch before that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just everyone saying hello and good morning. Okay. If <laughs> and welcoming could, you. Okay. If someone could just do just one right now, just so I can make sure that it's happening. That's me saying hi. Oh, there it goes. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that's happening in real time. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So questions. Uh, since we talked about, since we got started on questions, um, like we said, is you can go ahead and put those in the chat uh, as they come up. Um, I'll stop every three or four slides just to kind of slow down and kind of get caught up and see if there's any questions. Um, but yeah, I definitely encourage you guys to ask your questions in real time so I can answer those um, so we can keep on topic. Um, the only thing I ask is when you're asking questions, just try to keep them general. Um, if you can like, you know, not do individual or specific tax questions like, hey, my aunt Sally is selling, you know, rental property for 1.2 million. What's her capital gains? <laughs> those are questions that we can take off air. You can send those to me individually, email. I'm more than happy to help out with, but with those. But during the presentation here, let's just kind of keep it general um, to, to, the to the slides, the topic and to, to real estate agents in general. 
Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I've done over 100 different presentations for Bay East real estate agents in the, in the area. Um, I've been doing this for like six, seven, seven, eight years. Uh, most of my clients, I'm saving them on average 10 to 20K a year. Uh, some are different. Um, I actually just had a client that uh, just signed on with me yesterday. Um, it was a husband and wife partnership, and they had it actually as a partnership. And they were both taking out over $150,000 a year to both of them. And I said, hey, did you realize that you're basically both paying into Social Security and Medicare um, to the tune of over $45,000? And if you switch the partnership to just a single owner instead of both of you, you could cut that in half and basically save $22,000 a year. So literally in a five minute conversation, I was able to save them over $20,000 a year in your taxes. So yeah, sometimes it's a little bit deeper than that. So <laughs> sometimes it's like right on the surface, I can kind of pick those things up. Um, but yeah, my, my goal when I'm working with clients is to you know, help them figure out how they're, how they're overpaying in taxes, how they can save money on their taxes. Um, I also love getting creative. Um, one of my favorite questions from real estate agents is how do I ride off a boat or a yacht? Um, and uh, usually the, the best uh, answer to that is, well, do you have any property or are you showing property uh, on the waterline, um, whether that's uh, Discovery Bay or, or on the coast or in, in San Francisco on the peninsula? You know, what is there a way that you can use a boat or use some sort of floating device, if you will, um, to show property? And if you can, then by all means, that is then a tax deduction. So that's, like I said, really what I really enjoy doing uh, with my clients is, you know, making, being creative and, and finding different deductions uh, that they can take, right? Uh, we covered questions. So let's get straight into it. Um, so I actually modified my slides a little bit. Um, over the past couple of weeks, because I normally get the same, you know, four or five questions from most real estate agents. So instead of going right into the 2020 tax updates, or sorry, the 2021 tax updates and kind of telling you what's different, um, you know, since I haven't talked to your group in a while, I'm going to go ahead and just cover some The, the, the typical questions uh, that I'll get, I guess, creative questions I get from, from new clients is, uh, is business trips, right? How can I make business trips tax deductible? And how and can you like squeeze in vacation time during those business trips? And the answer is yes. Um, and really what we want to do is we want to be as creative as possible when you're taking trips so that we can maximize the business deductions for them. So the rule of thumb is basically that it has to be like 51% for business, which means that more than half the time has to be for business. Now, when we're looking at time, this is actually the days, right? So if you take a trip that's five days, 51% of five days would be three days, of course, right? So basically when we're looking at a trip or designing a trip, we wanna make sure that our trip is gonna be uh, three days of business. And then how many hours of business for each of those days? Well, it has to be again, 51%. So four hours of an eight hour business day, right? So four hours. So what does this mean? you know, wrapped up in a nutshell. Well, basically wrapped up, it's if you do four hours of work for three days on a five day business trip, then the whole trip can be tax deductible, right? So when we're looking at domestic travel, right, this is US travel. So whether you're going to you know, Texas or Florida or Maine or New York or Montana or Hawaii, um, you know, all domestic US, you want to make sure that the whole trip is deductible because it's either all or none. There's no in between. So if you don't meet if you don't meet those four hours over the three days, then the whole trip then does not become tax deductible. So international is completely different. We're not going to go into that because it's very you know specific, but uh, it's based on a percentage, and it's not all or none. It's uh, based on a percentage, right? Um, okay, so I don't see any questions on that, so we can keep going. Like I said, if you guys have any questions on this, feel free to pop in. Let me know. More than happy to answer those questions as we go. Now, um, here's some bad news. Um, I always hate talking about gifts for real estate agents because IRS has not changed the gift limit for decades, um, and they're still stuck at $25 per family. So what does this mean? Well, essentially, if you want to give a closing gift to a client, um, it's limited to $25, right? You can, you know, get only a, a bottle of wine or a couple of bottles of wine for that price. So yeah, uh, most real estate agents, especially in our area, really upset with this gift limit 
and the IRS has not changed the gift limit um, in, in decades, right? So, so if you want to do gifts or entertainment, entertainment is of $0, you can't deduct anything for entertainment. Um, usually what I recommend is to do some sort of raffle giveaway. So um, again, this shouldn't uh, impact your ethics. Of course, you always wanna make sure you're looking into the DRE and the ethics and, and how to give gifts and how to give entertainment and how you can you know, provide compensation to, to clients you know, when that's ethically and, and not ethically. I'm not gonna go into that. But basically, you know, one of the things that I talk about with clients is to do some sort of like raffle giveaway um, and uh, you know, in order to, to, to give gifts or entertainment to your clients. And if you're doing it in some sort of raffle giveaway, um, then the IRS is totally okay with that, right? Because then that's advertising and marketing where it is not um, gifts, right? Because we want to, uh, <laughs> and if we actually say gifts or client gifts, again, it's limited to $25. And of course, if you ever audit it, they're gonna wanna see every single person that you gave that gift to, and they're gonna tally it up. Um, good news for this year, uh, 2021 meals are now 100% deductible. So if you're familiar with the meal rules that we had, in 2021, uh, 2020 and prior years, it was always 50%. Um, so now meals are 100% deductible. So the only thing that you wanna keep track of when you're doing your meals is keeping track of the Ws, the who, the why, the where, when, and how much. Um, so the where, when, and how much is easy. That's on your credit card statement. But what's, on your, what's not on your credit card statement is who you met with to have that meal. And why did you have that meal? What sort of business uh, purpose did it have? Uh, were you talking about, uh, you know, uh, real estate leads or deals or a deal uh, that could come into fruition or a deal that was currently, um, you know, being in process? So if you ever want to take clients out to meals, potential clients out to meals, vendors, partners, referral partners, anything like that, um, meals are, like I said, 100% deductible. So now this is the best time um, to do meals. Okay. Um, I don't see anything in the chat. <laughs> I hope you guys can hear me okay. I hope this is going well and you guys are, are, are getting good information from this. So uh, let's, let's keep going. And like I said, if you guys have any questions on it, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat. I like to, uh, to keep these, uh, these entertaining for you guys as well as uh, you know, moving forward and answering your questions so that it's impactful for you and you guys are learning more about taxes for you. Um, the question that I always get uh, from everyone is, be vehicles, right? Should an agent buy or lease a vehicle? Um, what's the best way to keep track of business mileage, and track expenses, those kind of things. So without getting too in depth and personal, you know, whether you buy or lease a vehicle is really ultimately up to you. Um, one thing you want to do is if you're looking at a heavy vehicle, like a truck or an SUV, which we'll cover a little bit later, there's the bonus on the 179, which you can accelerate the depreciation and write that off on your federal taxes on year one, which is pretty darn cool. Um, but some people don't want or need that heavy SUV or, or truck, right? So you can certainly, uh, you know, lease a vehicle um, or buy it, right? You can get similar deductions for both. Um, but basically, when you're looking at leasing a vehicle, to figure out the deduction that we're going to take, you take the lease amount and you multiply that by the business use percentage. Uh, so what's the business use percentage? Well, basically, when you're looking at the mileage of the vehicle, you take the business miles divided by the total miles and that is your business use, right? So essentially what the IRS is doing is they're, they're backing out your personal use and saying, well, you can't take a deduction for your personal use. You can only take it for the business use. So is a lease vehicle good? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on your, your personal preferences, um, whether, you, uh, whether you want those deductions, I'm sorry, whether you, whether you want a, a you know, expensive luxury car on a lease, if you want a vehicle every two or three years. So like I said, there's a lot of personal preference for that. Um, John has a great question. Uh, you can no longer deduct golf meetings. That is partially correct. So the green fees um, would not be deductible um, because that's considered entertainment. Uh, that's actually been 0% for uh, quite a while. So hopefully you haven't been writing those off because <laughs> you haven't been able to write off uh, entertainment deductions for quite a while. Um, but of course, if you do food afterwards, then you can definitely deduct that food afterwards. Uh, that includes drinks and alcohol and, you know, food and all that stuff, right? So uh, yeah, you definitely want to go ahead and maximize the, the food and the, uh, the enjoyment afterwards, and not so much 
the green fees. Um, if you want to get uh, you know a little on the gray side, um, you know of tax law, if you want to deduct your if you rent a golf cart uh, or clubs or anything like that, you might want to deduct uh, those as equipment rental. Um, I wouldn't definitely I definitely wouldn't say no to <laughs> taking that as an equipment rental. Um, but again, everyone's kind of different to their gray area of tax law and how they're going to interpret that. Um, Tina has a question. What if the vehicle is leased under the business, like an S corporation? Yeah, I can certainly do that. Um, usually I don't recommend to lease or title a company, uh, car, uh, under the S corporation, because when you do that, you have to have business insurance on that, which is usually more expensive. So for the typical real estate agent that just has maybe one or two cars for the business, uh, usually makes a lot more sense to just title everything personally and not business. Um, John asks, how do we deduct domestic trips uh, as long as we work four hours during the day? Yes, right? So that's, that's, that's basically how you deduct a domestic trip. So if, if the trip is three days, then more than half of the time would be two days. So if two days, you would have to have four hours per each of those, those two days. So that would be eight hours in total, four hours for each of the day. How do you keep track of that? Well, you just keep track of the, the hours, right? And then you keep a log of the hours and what you're doing uh, during that day. So for the average real estate agent, you know, if you do a breakfast meeting, a lunch meeting and a dinner meeting, well then you, you know, there's three hours right there. And then the travel time to get to those each of those meetings, let's say 15, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to, you know, back and forth, right? Well, there's your four hours right there. So if you can do a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner meeting with potential clients or referral partners or other agents or, you know, tour vacation rentals or long-term rentals, or, hey, what is the, the, the rental market? What's the housing market look like in this area? You know, most real estate agents can find four hours in a day, pretty easy. And then you have the rest of the day uh, to do anything personal that you want. Um, okay, uh, one of the uh, questions that I get asked a lot is how to keep track of your business mileage and your, and your expenses and things like that. And hands down, the best way to keep track of anything is with an app. Um, so whether you have an iPhone or a Android, basically, you know, your, your cell phone, your smartphone, you're on your phone all day, every day, pretty much anyway, right? Uh, it's going with you wherever you go. So it can help you track your mileage. It's with you whenever you pay for something. So you can take a picture of the receipt if you want to do that. Um, so hands down, you want to do something like this. Now, uh, if you've seen my presentations in the past, I usually recommend like QuickBooks, um, Self-Employed or MileIQ. Um, but actually, I partnered with a company called Hurdler, um, and actually, I'm going to have a, uh, I, I do have an accountant kind of portal with Hurdler where I can have all of my clients on there. So I'm doing a special giveaway here just for this presentation. Uh, if you guys are not using an app to keep track of your business mileage or your expenses, you can email me uh, right now or, or later in the presentation. And on the subject line, just put Hurdler. Um, oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you guys, you will have access to this presentation. Uh, this is a Google uh, Sheets. So I'm going to give you guys this link afterwards. So you can go back and review this as much as you time. And I think it's being recorded as well. So you'll be able to watch it again. Um, so I digress. Uh, email me with the subject line hurdler. Uh, and I'll give you a free subscription to my software uh, that tracks your mileage and deductions. So if you're not doing this, you definitely want to do this. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and take care of you guys for free um, as long as you email me so I can get you set up. Um, John asks, how do we deduct domestic trips? Oh yeah, okay, so what's my email? Email, yeah, it's at the end of this presentation. So uh, make sure you guys get that. Um, okay, uh, LLCs and S corporations, again, pretty complex topic. There's a lot of questions, a lot of answers. There's a lot of complexities and you know, intricacies for different companies. But usually my rule of thumb or what I usually recommend is when you're doing about $50,000 of cash out, right? So that means when your profit minus your expenses is about $50,000 or you're taking $50,000 of cash out of your business, I usually recommend looking to do an LLC or an S corporation. Now to get into the technicalities, technically the DRE says that real estate agents should not be LLCs. They prefer the S corporation, but that's not to say that there's real estate agents out there that are LLCs because there are, um, but technically you should go with an S corporation instead of an LLC. Um, one of the biggest questions that I get asked a lot is what does it cost to work with a tax strategist? Um, or what is tax strategy cost? You know, cause I don't do just taxes with all my clients that, that come in. We always have some sort of tax strategy component to it. 
So the true cost, um, you know, is whether that's a monthly fee or a yearly fee, what you want to do is making sure that the tax strategist is understanding your situation and can give you actionable advice that you can work on that's going to save in taxes. So it shouldn't actually cost you anything to work with a tax strategy, a tax strategist. It should always make you money. And of course, if it's not making you money, then you're not working with a very good tax strategist uh, because a tax strategist should be able to give you new uh, ideas to save money on taxes should be working with you proactively throughout the year and saying, hey, did you think about this? Or did you do this? Or if you want to take this trip or this travel, how do you make that deductible? You know, having those conversations proactively throughout the year, it's going to help you save money on taxes. And of course, the goal is to always save more money on taxes than it costs to work with a tax strategist. So I always like kind of fielding that question because it doesn't cost anything to work with a tax strategist like myself. It always will make you money. So the only, the biggest question is, is what is the ROI that I'd be getting working with a tax strategist versus what is the cost? Because the ROI, of course, is the most important aspect to any investor. You want to know, hey, if I put in, you know, $2,000, how much am I going to get out, right? Are you going to be able to find $4,000, $6,000 of savings? So let's roll right into the 2021 tax updates. Uh, like I mentioned before, the meals at the restaurants are now 100% deductible. Uh, this tax law was actually written really hastily. So I'm not gonna go into the specifics of it, but basically it says meals at restaurants. So what is the restaurant? Does takeout apply? You know, does catering apply? It, like I said, it was, it was done pretty hastily. So basically we're just gonna go and go, all meals are 100% deductible. Um, if you're sending out 1099s, uh, these are things to like you know, stagers, photographers, videographers, uh, people that are doing repairs or maintenance or cleaning to your properties. If you're paying those uh, directly and you need to send out a 1099, make sure you're using the new form NEC and not the old form MISC. Um, this is new for 2020 and 2021. So make sure if you're sending out those 1099s that you're using the new form NEC. Um, also new for last year, but more importantly for this year, is if you're taking the standard deduction, which a lot of people are taking the standard deduction now versus itemized, you can now add on a little bit to charity. Um, so if you are single, you can add in $300 a year uh, for, your, for your charitable donations, whether that's cash or check or, um, or you know, stuff given to, to Goodwill or Savers. Uh, you can do up to $300 if you're single and $600 if you're married, which is pretty cool. Remember, this gets added on to your standard deduction, so you don't have to itemize anymore to take charitable donations. Um, also, look for a saver's credit. If you're putting money away for retirement, uh, make sure that you're looking for the saver's credit. A lot of people miss this credit um, because it's not really asked. It's not really done a lot, but uh, you know, if you, if you fall into the income limits to get the saver's credit, make sure you get the saver's credit because it's basically free money from the government. Uh, to help you save money for retirement, which is great. Um, speaking of retirement, if you have a small business, which I know most of you guys do, um, whether you're self-employed or, or a corporation or S corporation, anything like that, if you set up a small business retirement account, whether that's a SEP or a simple or a 401k, anything like that, you'll be able to get a credit for those costs. Now, hopefully you didn't pay a lot for those because uh, technically most of those are free or low cost. But if you did spend some amount of money uh, for a small business retirement account set up, Look for the credit, which will go, which will go ahead and re um, uh, give you some sort of benefit or tax credit for setting up the small business retirement accounts. Um, also, if you have children, you probably notice these checks throughout the year. Um, you know the advanced child tax credits. Just know that the child tax credit is expanding. Uh, there's now more tax credits for children than there ever have been before in uh, the history of taxes. Um, so they've been expanded and sent um, proactively uh, throughout the year in checks, right? So I'm uh, not going to go through the specifics of that, but you probably have seen those checks if you have kids. If you don't, then <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're 70 years or older, make sure you know and understand what an RMD is. This is a required minimum distribution. If you've never heard of RMD and you're, and you're 70 years or older or close to 70, Make sure you do some research and due diligence on what an RMD is, because if you don't take these, there is a tax penalty um, for not taking these, right? So essentially the IRS is going to tax or take away your money for you not taking your money out of retirement accounts. So if you're close to 70 or 70 years or older, make sure you understand what an RMD or required minimum distribution is. All right, no questions. I'm going to keep going. 
Um, now, as a tax strategist, my goal and you know everything that I do is keeping up with the tax law. You know, figuring out what's new, what's different. Is there any changes with California tax law, federal tax law? How does this apply to real estate agents and self-employed individuals? Um, so, one of the things that happened last year was really important and impactful uh, was the California AB 150, where it's basically an elective tax for an S corporation or an LLC partnership that you can pay this tax to California and then get a deduction on your federal taxes. So pretty much across the board for most of my clients, I said, it's not a good, uh, not a good deal. There was some, some downfalls some pitfalls um, last year when we were looking at this. So for most of my clients, we, we passed on this. We, we actually didn't elect to do this. Um, but just a couple of weeks ago, they actually fixed a lot of the problems with that. So going forward, it, again, every tax deduction and strategy is, is different for every person. Um, but usually by and large, I'm actually going to be recommending uh, that my clients look into the AB 150 and potentially do the, the AB 150, which, like I said, is an elective tax on your S corporation. that You can then um, stick a deduction on your federal taxes for the California tax that you paid. Um, now, if you're not completely like tired and asleep from what I just said, um, here's the numbers, right? So if you earned a million dollars in business profits, you would save around $32,000 in federal taxes. And if you earned about $100,000 in business profits, it would save you around $2,500. So maybe you're interested in that at that price, um, you know, at, at that savings. Maybe you're like, no, it's just too complex. I'm not that interested in it. Um, for everybody, it's different, right? So you have to decide where you are, you know, between these two numbers and is the savings worth it for you? And like I said, for everyone that's, different. Everyone is in a different situation, different tax bracket. Um, you've got to decide you know, where you are and, and what that savings is worth it to you. Um, but one thing that's really important, I think, to know with the AB 150 is you need to be an S corporation to do this, right? So if you've been on the fence about setting up an S corporation, this may just be the push that you need. Now, you don't have to do the AB 150 or make any decisions for the AB 150 until the end of the year. However, if you want to take advantage of it, but you're not an S corporation, you need to set up the S corporation now because only S corporations and multi-member LLC partnerships can take advantage of this. So if you're like, hey, Jake, I'm kind of interested in taking the one B AB 150, like what do I need to do right now, even though I don't need to make the payment till the end of the year? Number one, you have to have an S corporation. So if you don't and you're interested in taking the 150, go ahead and do the S corporation, okay? Um, not going to go into the specifics of the problems and you know why we didn't do it last year, um, but just know, kind of keep it in the back burner, right? You don't need to make the decision or payment now, but like I said, just put a reminder in your calendar to revisit the topic later in the year. Um, or like I said, if you don't have an S corporation, you want to go ahead and set up the S corporation right away. Um, and then I can actually help with the S corporation as well. Um, just email me or reach out to me. Uh, let me know that you want to set up the S corporation. I'll help you out with that. Uh, it's actually super easy on the California website for the Secretary of State, and you don't have to pay a lawyer to um, to get it set up or anything like that. You can do it um, uh, by yourself. Uh, John asks, seems like a good idea if you make $100,000 or more. At what point is it not? $50,000, $70,000? Well, just like any tax deduction, you have to see what it's worth for you, right? You've got to, you know, if you're tax, if you're, if you're, you know, making $50,000, $75,000 a year, you're at the lower tax bracket and it's only going to save you $1,000. You've got to decide, okay, what are the downsides of making this elective tax to, um, to, the, IR, to the California Franchise Tax Board? What is it going to save on my, Cal, uh, on my federal? And you kind of have to decide, okay, is it worth what I need to do to, you know, is, is it worth it for me to make this, to make this, to pay this tax, to do this thing um, based on my tax savings. Um, so if I told you that, you know, you could save $30,000 by buying a new vehicle, you might say, well, that's great. But you might say, well, I, I don't need that new vehicle. <laughs> I'm fine with my other one, or I just bought my other one last year. I don't need a new vehicle, right? So with every, every person is each an individual situation, a tax strategy scenario that we have to run through. Um, and like I said, I mean, everybody's situation is different. Um, for instance, I could say, well, you could have a, um, you know, a, a secondary office in a second home, right? So you could have a second home, let's say in Lake Tahoe, 
And then every time you, you drove or flow up, flew up to Lake Tahoe, you'd be able to deduct that drive or that, or that, or that fly or that trip. Right. And you'd be like, well, that's great, but does it cost, what's the cost of, of, you know, having a second home in Lake Tahoe, for instance. Right. And is that, does it make sense versus what you like to do personally versus the business tax deduction? Right. So everybody is different. Um, uh, Tina says, can you go back to the AB 150 problem slide? Um, I can, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to go through the, um, the specifics on this. Um, you, you know, if you, if you have a tax person that you're working with right now, you should reach out to them about the 150. If they were a true tax strategist and looking to, you know, help you save money on taxes throughout the year, they should have already reached out to you about the AB 150 and talked to you about an S corporation and things like that. If they didn't, then they're probably just a tax preparer and not a tax strategist. If, you know, if you really want to work with a tax strategist, make sure that your tax person is a true strategist and then they're reaching out to you about things like AB 150 and they're not just saying, hey, give me your numbers. It's tax time. Give me your numbers, <laughs> right? Because if all they're doing is taking your numbers and plugging them into the boxes on a tax form, uh, you know they're not proactively helping you with tax strategy. They're just preparing your taxes. Okay. So Tina, if you have any more questions about the AB one hundred and fifty, feel free to reach out to me. More than happy to talk to you about those. Okay. Um, so if you have any communication with the IRS, whether you are waiting for a phone call, waiting for a letter, if you received a letter and uh, corresponded back to them and you're like, Hey, I just can't get a hold of these guys. Just know that everyone else is in the same boat with the IRS. Um, they they have a huge backlog over 10 million tax returns. That they need to go through over 5 million pieces, pieces of correspondence. Um, there's refund delays now because of the advanced tax credit uh, for the children. If there's a mismatch on those, like myself, I didn't deposit one of the checks. Um, I had it in my back pocket of my jeans and I washed them and I'm like, oh, but the check is destroyed. There's no way to deposit it, right? So when I go to do my taxes, I, you know, what they think that they sent me in advanced tax credits, I didn't receive because I didn't deposit one of the checks, right? So there's going to be a mismatch. There's going to be a refund delays. These kind of things happen, but just know that whenever you're having any kind of dealings with the IRS, they're going to be backlogged. Uh, because of COVID, because of understaffed, they're just, you know, and, and under, uh, they just don't have enough money to do what they need to do and to, you know, make their systems uh, more, <laughs> more technology uh, approved or, or innovative, right? They just don't have the cash for it or the funding for it. So yeah, they're just, uh, you know, understaffed, overworked, and not able to get what they need done. So uh, if you have something going on with the IRS, just give them time, you know, let them know that, uh, or just, you know, Give them time. <laughs> um, and if you have been receiving any automated letters, just know that they are being sent out wrong or incorrectly. If you email, them, oh, sorry, if you don't, if you write them back, they don't do email. If you send them a letter, just know that you're like behind 5 million pieces of correspondence. So it's going to take you some time to get back. Okay. Uh, important dates. Make sure you have all of these dates on your calendar. Um, we're now at 224. So you know, two of these are already passed. The two that are already passed is the first, the fourth quarter estimated tax payment that's due. If you haven't made that, you should probably think about making that. Um, and then uh, January 31st, the 1099 forms were due, like I, like I mentioned before, the NEC forms. So if you had any vendors that you paid with cash or check or Venmo or PayPal, and you did the friends and family and not the business, um, yeah, you might want to do the 1099 forms. The IRS does like you to do those. They do require you to do those, every contractor that you have. So make sure you send those out as soon as you can, if you have to do those. And again, they're late, but it's okay. The IRS would rather have them late than uh, not at all. Uh, the upcoming really important dates, 315, this is your S corporation, multi-member LLCs, partnership tax payment is due, right? So really important to know that the payment is due. Even if you do the extension, you still have to pay something because if you don't pay by 315, this is the date that the payment is due. So even if you do an extension, you still have to pay something so that um, they, the franchise tax board, for instance, like the S corporations, the payment is due, right? So if you miss that payment 315, then it's technically late. You have, you have interest and penalties on that late, even if you do an extension. Um, and then 418 is your individuals and your C corporations, the tax payment is due. 
So make sure to pay something. Even if you don't know what it is, pay something so that you can reduce the interest and the penalties on what you do need to pay and make sure you file your tax return by 418 or an extension. There's no downsides to do an extension. You can extend up to October 18th, um, but just know that, uh, that, hey, you know, you do have to do the paperwork for the extension. Um, and then also to add insult to injury for first or second year tax, I'm sorry, for um, self-employed people like real estate agents like yourselves. Um, if you're just kind of like new into taxes and how much tax am I going to owe? And, you know, what about these estimated taxes? Do I need to pay these? Well, the first quarter, your estimated taxes for next year, right, 2022 taxes are actually due on the same day as your 2021 taxes. You can see this year, right? So this is where a lot of first and second year real estate agents get into a lot of tax problems because they don't realize that they need to hold some of the money from their commissions and the profit from their business. They need to hold that to pay taxes or to pay estimated taxes. And so this first or second year when they do their taxes, these tax bills really sneak up on them. And if they have been spending all that money instead of saving it for taxes, which of course you would want to spend it. <laughs> like, like if they wanted money, they would have taken money, right? Well, no, you get as a self-employed, you have to hold on to that money for them. So a lot of real estate agents and self-employed people get into this their first, second, third year of self-employment where this tax bill kind of snowballs and, um, and it, it can be really difficult to overcome. So if you are in a situation like this, reach out to me, reach out to, you know, a tax resolution specialist, if it's really bad, um, you know, and if it's something as simple, like, Hey, I don't have my, my bookkeeping or my PL done for the year, by all means, email me. Um, you know, my, my team can turn around a, a tax ready PL in like six to eight hours. Um, and a lot of times we'll do that for free or low cost, just a couple hundred dollars, just to kind of keep you moving uh, and get you get you moving forward with your taxes. Because there's there's really no reason to you know let that snowball become bigger and bigger and snowball and snowball because you know you can get your taxes done. At least if you know how much it is, you can do a payment plan, installment plan, offering compromise, something like that, so you can move forward uh, with your taxes, right? Instead of just you know, if, if you put it off and, and don't worry about it or don't pay it and don't communicate, then it always becomes problem, a uh, bigger problem. So uh, for your 2021 taxes, um, I'm hearing this a lot from a lot of real estate agents, uh, both seasoned and brand new, that they're like, Jake, I just, I have no idea how much I spent in 2021. I haven't been tracking my mileage. I haven't been tracking my, my expenses. I don't have bookkeeping. I don't have a bookkeeper. My books aren't done. Um, you do need a tax ready PL for your taxes. So if you, you know, <laughs> if you're like, well, I can't do my taxes because I don't know what my expenses are, um, we can actually go through your credit card statement and your bank account. We'll actually go through that with you, uh, categorize it all for you, create a tax ready PL. Um, and for you guys here on this call, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that for free, uh, no cost to you. So again, my email is at the end of this presentation. Uh, email me, uh, just email me with tax ready PL, um, and I'll email you back what, what we need to do that. It's, you know, basically some exports from your from your bank and credit card, which is super easy. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and take care of that for free for you to uh, to help you move forward with your 21 taxes. And you don't have to work with us for taxes or tax strategy if you want to, of course. More than happy to take you on as a client, um, but just to help you out, right? Even if you if you just like, hey, I just want to do it myself on TurboTax or whatever. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a tax ready PL for you for free. No charge for you guys. Um, also, don't miss this credit. As a tax strategist, I'm always looking to help my clients save on taxes, right? So the form 7202, a lot of people missed this last year. A lot of people are going to miss this again for this year. Uh, basically, if you had COVID or thought you had COVID or you're advised by a health professional to quarantine, if your kid's school is closed, if the childcare was closed, um, you know, this tax credit is worth like $5,000. Um, this one's worth, you know, $5,000 as well. Um, so these are extra tax credits that are available to you because of COVID and being self-employed and not being able to work. Um, you know, if you were quarantining or had COVID or your kids were, school was closed, uh, you probably heard my kids running around in the background. <laughs> like, you know, kids are kids, right? You, you gotta take care of them. So uh, if you had Schedule C profit, you you know, like these tax credits are available to you. So you got to make sure that you, you look out for these credits and you get every tax credit and every deduction that's available to you. So like I said, I mean, a lot of people missed these last year. If 
the person that you're working with just says, hey, give me your numbers and doesn't ask you questions, they're not being proactive with you about helping you save money on taxes, you're probably overpaying on your taxes. We just don't know how much. Um, so I already talked about uh, the apps. I used to I used to recommend QuickBooks Self-Employed, but I don't anymore. Like I said, now I have Hurdler and I give that to you guys for free. So just email me with Hurdler on your subject line and I will set you up on that system at no cost to you. Um, if you didn't track your mileage in 2021, which I get this from so many real estate agents because you know, as, as real estate agents, you guys are driving all around all over the place, right? Uh, just crazy mileage. Um, so if you didn't track your mileage, you could go, if you use Google, you can search Google Maps timeline in your Gmail account. And if you have the location on, Google might've been tracking your drives and all the locations that you want all of last year. Now, unfortunately you can't export this or do this really quickly, but it still gives you something to go back on because you know if you didn't keep track of anything, then you're like, I have no idea how many miles I drove, right? But at least with this, you can go back and you can have like a VA or somebody go day by day and track your mileage. So essentially this is what it looks like. You can see this is 2021 and I drove down to San Jose and I was up here in Marin and I was out here in Sonora, went up to Chico and Paradise. Um, so you can kind of see how this was tracking my drives throughout the year. And if I didn't have anything to go on, if I wasn't tracking my mileage, which typically I don't, I just have my VA uh, go in and, and just kind of recreate my miles here for the year because I don't really drive that much. Um, but for you guys, for, for real estate agents drive all around all the time, you know, you want to keep track of those mileage. Hurdler will do that for you. Like I said, if you didn't have any tracking for 2021, um, you know, this, this Google Maps timeline is a great tool and resource if you didn't track, all right? I haven't had any questions recently. Everyone doing okay? Am I going too fast, going too slow? No? Okay. Um, so gonna go ahead and wrap it up here in just a couple minutes. Um, let me just check the chat really quick. Yep, okay. So yeah, i uh, gonna wrap it up here. I think we're gonna be closing out the meeting. So just a couple things. Um, if you wanna buy like a new vehicle, uh, save a bunch of money on taxes, uh, like a Porsche Cayenne Turbo is a great example. Um, you not only get the electric vehicle tax, but you can also use the what's called the 179 and the bonus because this is a heavy SUV, 6,000 pounds or heavier. Um, and so this qualifies for the electric vehicle tax credits and the 179 and the bonus. So huge tax deductions with a Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Do you need to buy the brand new one? No. Uh, if you find, um, you know, like a, a Porsche, you know, a couple years older, you buy it used, that's fine. As long as it's new to you. Uh, you can take the 179 and the bonus. The EV, uh, EV tax credit is only for new vehicles. Uh, a couple of ways to lower your taxable income. Uh, you know what I work with my clients. We look at income shifting. You know, looking at hey, could the kids work in the business? Can we put money to their Roth account? Uh, can we income shift to a 401k, IRA, SEP? Do we buy stuff? Do we convert personal expenses to business expenses? Are there any tax credits that are available to you as real estate agents? Are they doing RMV? Did you buy you know, an electric vehicle? Uh, disabled access credit, you can actually take this on your website and on your marketing. A lot of people don't know that. So we find tax credits through that. Uh, if you wanna put in solar, restoring old buildings, um, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the Build Back Better, but if you're interested in where that is, um, here's a link for that uh, Build Back Better. Uh, California, we have this $1,000 cap on the SALT taxes, the real estate taxes and interest. This is a huge thing. There's actually some um, uh, some laws or something that's being changed. It's somewhere, somewhere in some sort of legal process, <laughs> um, but hopefully we're gonna get rid of that in a couple of years. Um, ACA 11, if you're not familiar with this, you need to be familiar with this. This is a new California tax. Uh, that could be increasing uh, taxes substantially for California um, as California maybe become the first state with a uh, single payer stream healthcare system. So really, really interesting uh, if that happens in California. And that's actually gonna wrap it up uh, for the presentation.
Oops, thank you so much, Jake. Let's see, let me turn my camera back on. There we go. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and expertise to help our realtors save money on their taxes this year. I sure learned a lot and I hope you all got some good tips as well. Um, this video is recorded and will be available on ARIA Greater East Bay's YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. So please feel free to reach out to Jake with any additional tax questions that you might have. Um, next, I would like to share our next ARIA Greater East Bay event, which is coming up on Thursday, March 24th in Point Richmond in person. We will be having a mixer and touring a commercial office building that is currently up for lease right by the water. So we will have drinks and food. So make sure you make it down there and have a great time with us, okay? And uh, our next event after that is going to be on Saturday, April 2nd. We will have our annual installation gala at the Claremont Hotel and Spa. It will be a dress in all white party and we will have dinner, cocktails, lots of entertainment. We still have some sponsorship opportunities available and tickets are almost sold out. So make sure you get your ticket if you haven't gotten it yet. And um, those are our next two events. So, you know, you guys stay tuned. We have events every month. And next I'd like to introduce you to Michael Cito with Cito Realty my Texas friend here today representing ARIA Foundation to say a few words. Michael, please take it away. Thank you for the few minutes. Um, so uh, some of you know me and some of you don't, uh, but I've been on the board of ARIA Foundation for a bit and uh, just wanted to let you guys know that ARIA Foundation is going to be hosting a fundraiser dinner uh, at the the Denver uh, Global Luxury event that's coming up in March. I uh, just want to make sure we invite everybody uh, out there that's going to be there, uh, that there is going to be a gala there for a fundraiser. Um, the foundation is trying to raise, uh, our target goal is $100,000. Uh, and we're going to have different things there in terms of silent auctions and auctions. Uh, the event is called Denims and Diamonds. Uh, uh, so I, I've heard there's going to be a lot of things that's going to be great for you ladies out there in terms of uh, uh, some some things will be announced soon. But the, the event is definitely in Denver. Uh, for some of you guys that don't know a little bit about the foundation. So the foundation, we support, our focus support is really on veteran home, home ownership and uh, helping AAPI with natural disasters and community outreach. Um, in terms of this, I didn't want to take too much of your time. If you guys have any questions, let no me know. And I'll, I'll email uh, Elena you, this uh, Denims and Diamonds flyer. If okay, anybody exactly. wants info on it, they can reach out to you. And for those of you that's planning on going to the Four Seasons over there for the Global Luxury, uh, try to join us for that. And I just want to say that the two events that I announced earlier are on the local level uh, that we put together. And what Michael is telling us is ARIA National also has events that they put on about four a year. And this one is the Global Luxury Summit. And what are the dates on that, Michael? Uh, I believe it is 28th, 29th, and 30th, uh, I believe. March, March 28th to 30th in Denver. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of our board members are going to that. So it's, yeah. it's always fun on national, uh, ARIA national events. Yeah, for sure. It's great yep. to connect. As I mentioned earlier, there are about 18,000 members nationwide. And so this is how we connect with everybody and you get referral business, friends all over the world and how I met Michael Cito, who's my buddy out here in, in Texas. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. Yeah. Okay, well, thank Don't you. Don't get your you taxes done. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. And thanks, Michael, for that. And uh, that's a wrap for this event. So we hope to see you at the next one. Thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.